Hello YouTube and welcome to the Mask Face Journal. I'm John and today I want to talk about Poison Ivy's cycle of life and death. First I'd like to compare Poison Ivy now with what she was like before the New 52. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not an expert on the subject of Batman villains. I've read a lot, but by no means everything, so I'm going to use one specific story as the basis of comparison. The story is Stalked by Paul Dini and Joe Benitez. In that story, Poison Ivy is portrayed as a complete psychopath who takes pleasure in torturing people to death, slowly by having one of her plants basically digest her victims alive. She is shown to have no regard for human life whatsoever. Other stories, of course, have portrayed her differently, but it's difficult to make her a sympathetic villain again after that kind of portrayal. In the New 52, however, she has been more of an anti-hero, definitely preferring plants over people, causing plenty of trouble, but not going out of her way to kill anyone. I believe she's described as misguided by Batman early on. This brings me to the miniseries Poison Ivy Cycle of Life and Death, written by Amy Chu and drawn by Clay Mann. The story opens in Africa, where Ivy and her guide find some sort of ancient plant that she brings back to the States to study at her new job, at the Gotham Botanical Gardens, where she works under her real name. Yes, her real name. She's a supervillain who has operated publicly for years without a mask, yet the name Pamela Isley doesn't raise any alarms. I get that researching her name comes up in the story, but come on! It's Gotham. It's kind of like never having heard of the Joker before. When Ivy is out drinking with Harley Quinn and having a falling out, I'll probably go into details on my thoughts on Harley Quinn in another video, Ivy's boss and mentor is murdered at the Botanical Gardens and gets discovered by Ivy the next day. Also, all of their genetic research has been stolen. I'm not going to go through the story in detail, partially because it makes an incredibly long and boring video, but mostly because every character in this story is so utterly forgettable. Basically, it's a murder mystery, where people around Poison Ivy dies, but she's innocent of those crimes. But she totally murders other people for no good reason other than that they annoy her as well, so you know, yay, protagonist. Anyway, when not at work, she's pursuing the genetic research on her own and creates two plant babies. We also get to see some sort of monster in silhouette, indicating that it is responsible for the death in the gardens. Ivy, Catwoman and Sidekick Man, yes I'm that invested, finds a secret lab that has used Ivy's stolen research to create other plant babies, and Ivy takes one of them with her before destroying the lab. She now has three plant babies, with accelerated growth, that grow into teenagers between issues. The next issue, the teenage plant girls break Ivy's curfew and goes clubbing. Ivy finds out and grounds them, and then the monster attacks her. It turns out that the monster is in fact the second victim, who was her old chauvinistic boss who was dying and used the stem cells from the plant baby experiments to heal himself, but also turn into a monster. He killed a bunch of people for reasons and now he wants the remaining plant girls to keep on living. They slug it out, with the plant girls joining in, but they can't seem to beat him. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Swamp Thing shows up and kicks the monster dude's ass. When I say out of nowhere, I mean that, because it was not established beforehand. Ivy mentions that he exists earlier, but he has no reason whatsoever to show up in this book. Deus Ex Machina, pure and simple. Monster dude gets a second win, but gets chopped out with machetes by the plant girls. Ivy makes up with Harley while the plant girls leave with Sidekick Guy because Ivy needs to let them go blah 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 empty nest. This story was mostly pointless. The new characters are not interesting, the mystery is by the numbers and the conclusion is a cheat. The underlying message is that Ivy is lonely and wants a family but can't see that her family has been with her all along. I'm not sure this character development is going to matter going forward either. This Ivy has started killing people, and the book almost tries to excuse that with one victim maybe abusing his dogs and the other being a sleazy co-worker who hits on her. At least she doesn't take any pleasure in it. Then there's Sidekick Guy, who is introduced as a potential love interest, as if anyone in the audience would believe that Ivy is into guys. But maybe this entire thing can be summed up as, not my Ivy, and be summarily dismissed. Like this video? Great! Like, comment and subscribe. Hated it? Tell me what a tool I am in the comments and still like, comment and subscribe. 
yeah, that's how I roll.